Good morning, I'm Donna Rosenberg from Jamison Legal and I'm Director and Head of In-House for UK and Europe. This is another interview in the series of interviews on the topic of the rise of the modern GC, aimed at talking to a variety of senior lawyers who have achieved consultancy, management, strategic and or executive positions, discussing a variety of topics associated to careers in-house, technology, the legal industry and much more. I'm joined today by well, I'm joined today by Will Scrimshaw, General Counsel at Benevolent AI, a company that uses artificial intelligence and technology to re-engineer the drug discovery process. Will has been with Benevolent since 2019 when he joined as the first company lawyer. Prior to that, he held a number of roles at Microsoft, including as an attorney for Skype in London and a director for corporate affairs in Brussels. Earlier in his career, Will trained and qualified at Norton Rose Fulbright and spent time in-house at BT and then Skype prior to its acquisition by Microsoft. Hi, Will. How are you? Hi, Donna. Uh, I'm great, thanks. And thanks a lot for having me today. Excited well, to be here. Thank you for joining us. Um, it would be great to hear a little bit more about yourself and what interested you also um, in the topic of the rise of the modern GC. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, you've, you've given some background. Um, I'm, I'm always really interested in, in I guess, the, the topic of in-house legal careers more broadly. Um, and it's good to good to have the opportunity to talk about it, to share some, let's say, learnings, but just to share share some of my sort of journey so far and also to sort of you know, to, to, to talk at a community level about about how, how sort of in-house careers shape up these days. So i um, glad glad to participate. Fantastic. And did you want to talk a little bit more about your current role and, um, you know, how that sort of has uh, contributed to your career over the years? Yeah, sure. So, I, um, as you mentioned, I joined Benevolent AI um, as an AI drug discovery company uh, just over two years ago. Um, and I've sort of been involved in, I was the first legal, legally qualified person. We had uh, had the benefit of having some, uh, some other sort of uh, IP professionals and data protection professionals uh in the team already but i was the first lawyer so i've spent the last couple of years uh forming a, a legal team um sort of throwing myself into the process of, of working out what the company really wants it's kind of nice to have a, a a sort of an open role to sort of build from the ground up which is sort of part of the appeal to join um I've in earlier in my career I've been part of sort of similarly sized companies but but sort of with with legal teams when i was slightly more junior in career so this has been a really exciting opportunity to um, to sort of to build something from scratch, which is always nice. Um, and so I had a really, really exciting and, and, and busy and um, uh, very interesting couple of years, just learning, I guess, the full breadth of, of what a general counsel gets involved in. And it's not my first in-house legal career uh, step. So obviously I've, I've got an idea of what it's like being an in-house lawyer, but um, I think it's, it, it's, it's very different each time. And so um, it's been a lot to learn, but it's been, been a, a very interesting couple of years. Thank you. And what did a in-house career represent to you? And was there anything in particular that um, uh, triggered the move? Yeah, so I mean, I started at Norton Rose, uh, Norton Rose as, uh, as it was, Norton Rose Fulbright now, um, and sort of did the usual training contract and qualified into IP and IT commercial team. Um, and uh, pretty early on, I was able to go on secondment to a client. Um, at the time, we worked for a, a easy jet and easy group and easy car and that whole sort of umbrella of, of companies um, and had a client to come in my first six months which was sort of a something of a baptism of fire as a newly qualified but but you know it became very clear to me as a sort of personal thing that um it was much more interesting in my perspective obviously it's a very personal thing but um you know to be on the other side of the fence as it were to sort of see transactions through to see pieces of work through to conclusion to sort of be involved in lots of very different things um and i, I you know prior to going in house i'd started to specialize uh not just in ip but in ip litigation and so i was i was off down the sort of specialist route and i, I decided actually I, I preferred and really liked this kind of idea that you come to work and you never quite know what's going to happen each day um and you were sort of uh you know just enough about anything to be sort of slightly dangerous but 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 you're not sort of an expert in anything and, and actually i found that much more interesting um private practice was was a great grounding and it's a great you know i wouldn't have it any other way in terms of starting your career and learning learning some of the, the, the sort of key skills of a lawyer but I, I always felt that it was just more interesting to to practice law in, in a sort of a much more commercial setting i guess that makes sense and did you have a roadmap when you thought about moving uh into an in-house position and you know if if you didn't um would you consider a roadmap to be important 
Yeah, I, I'd love to say I did, and I've never been a sort of a, a five-year plan kind of person. <laughs> um, so, so, so I didn't, and, and I think I should have done. And I think, you know, if I was advising my my former self, um, I think one thing I've learned is obviously, you know, private practice a, a key benefit if you if you want sort of linear career progression is that you know, the private practice model by and large is still very linear in terms of years of qualification and then associate, senior associate of council. And I know there are more kind of stages in the way these days, but ultimately it's all about you know getting to partnership. Um, and an in-house in-house legal um, is kind of entirely the opposite to that. Really, I think you know often you see very flat structures. Um, I mean, as, as in-house legal has grown as a thing, you you do get sort of you know over time as legal teams grow, you get more more sort of roles and, and ability to sort of build a career. But I think a plan is very important because I think you have to be more mindful of what it is you want, and, and then you know if you know what you want, then you can have something to shoot for. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's not just about linear progression in house. It's about sort of breadth of experience and, and maybe going off and doing something else for a couple of years, um, which is not necessarily sort of a, a step up. It might be a step to, to the side, but ultimately you're sort of broadening your portfolio for when you get to general counsel level, when you need need to know, you know, you need to know some corporate law, you need to know some employment law, you need to know how to do a commercial transaction, et cetera. Um, so, so I think the plan is really important. So that, so that you're, you're honest with yourself about what you like as well, so that you can kind of try to try to be planful and proactive about about going and getting it. Um, and that may mean moving ultimately. That's the other thing about in house is that sometimes you might do a couple of years somewhere, and, and ultimately because um, you're reliant on people sort of dropping off the top in the nicest possible way. You know, sometimes that happens, sometimes that doesn't. And so if if, if that's important to you to keep moving upwards in in, in a linear fashion, then often you need to go go find that by by sort of, I guess, getting your promotion with each move. Um, so, so yeah, it's definitely it's definitely much more of a jigsaw puzzle than maybe just sort of being in in, in private practice from trainee through to retirement, which <laughs> is still very common. But <laughs> yeah, and how important is uh, legal to the development and growth of a company? So, I mean, every lawyer is going to say ever more important. I mean, I think um, you know one thing uh, in the past, I've worked in big legal in-house legal teams where I had a reporting line into another lawyer and i would say as being a general counsel and reporting to a ceo i think that's a very it's a very different thing and i think you you learn very clearly that what, what how you view the legal world and the, and the utility of the stuff of, of what you do every day and and how the ceo and the business views it is often mm -hmm. it should broadly be they should broadly <laughs> realize your value of course but but the way in which they view things are very different so i think i think part of the skill is it, it legal is increasingly important to the development and growth of the company but Part of the skill of an in-house lawyer is 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 making sure that the company realizes that, uh, and that's not to say you're forever sort of trumpeting how wonderful you are. I mean, obviously you have to do it in a judicious way, but sort of, and this this comes back to sort of comes down to sort of metrics and recording how you're spending your time and and making sure you're doing it in the most useful way, and you're not spending time on things that you like doing, but you're spending time on things which drive value to the business, and that you really can be part of the development and growth. Um, especially as you know there are ever more laws to navigate and, and compliance is is ever bigger thing i think you know the lawyer can really transition from just being someone people go to when there's a legal problem to actually being a a key member of the sort of the the, the executive team of the company and looking at technology how do you feel that may or has already changed uh the in-house legal function I've, I've looked at this a lot and I, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of hype around technology and I think everyone feels like they need to say something about AI um, and how they're deploying AI in, in their legal in-house team and I think what I've come to realize is that is less is often more at the moment and I think you know um, a lot of people are trying to sort of run before they can walk in terms of looking at the solution rather than necessarily what they're trying to achieve and I think I think what I've found from building a, a team from scratch is that some of the really basic stuff is the most important thing to get right. And that sounds really obvious, but yeah. you know, legal technology is kind of all about making sure you've got the basics like a contract management platform in place so you can find contracts and you know when they expire and all, all that sort of stuff, which sounds really basic, but you, know, you don't have it when you arrive because no one else has thought about it. Um, and, and, and other things like that. So, you know, I think before you get to kind of really sophisticated AI analysis of your contractual terms so you can build a risk profile across your commercial portfolio I mean that's all that's all great and very very useful um, but I think that's kind of step number 10 or whatever down, down the line 
Um, so, so I, I found legal technologies is, is very helpful. And I think particularly if you have a sales driven function, which I, I don't in my current role, but you know, if you have a high volume, relatively low risk um, you know, contractual process that you need to support because you've got a sales function, you're selling things as a business, then you know, the, the kind of tools that are available to support that in legal technology are really, really very good. Um, so I guess it's just sort of determining what, what your business really needs and getting it really working. And before moving to things like automation and you know, NDA automation and basic master service agreement automation and all that sort of stuff. So there's definitely sort of a step process. But but yes, important important to have a strategy, even if the strategy is to to think about it in the future. I've lost you, Will. Cool. Oh, still here. That's still <laughs> Um, if we'll, we'll keep going, we'll, we'll go with the technology. <laughs> um, when we talk about flexible and remote working, um, what, what are some of the challenges that may present for lawyers in the future um, and are there any pros and cons? Yeah, so I mean, I mean everyone's been talking about this uh, ad nauseum for a whole year and I, I think you know most of the most of the commentary about working remotely and flexibly sort of is, is generically applicable to lawyers as it is to any other professional services person who works at a, at a computer. Um, I mean, I think for lawyers specifically, some of the things we touched on around, I think, you know, a lawyer often has an umbrella function in terms of, you know, they have oversight of the company and what they're up to at a sort of relatively high level. And one of the few people is a GC who has such a broad view along with the CEO and probably you know, maybe the CFO. And so joining the dots is quite a lot of what you do and making sure that one part of the business knows that the other part of the business is doing stuff. And I think that that sort of stuff, stuff peculiarly for a lawyer is, um, you know, is, is harder to do o o offline. So I think you know, part of part of the sort of, you know, flexible working hybrid role, which everyone's sort of tending towards this midpoint between, you know, fully flex and, and fully in the office. And everyone's sort of saying, oh, we'll get in the middle, which yeah. <laughs> is kind of about 99% of people are, are saying that end up. I think. It poses a little bit more logistical complexity around making sure that you're present, and if you're, you know, you're doing a job as a legal function, you're kind of getting in and amongst your clients, and you're you're in the office, and you, you know, the people talk about these serendipitous water cooler moments, which I think is maybe overegging it a little bit. But you do yeah. you do you do hear stuff, right? I mean, you hear stuff in the office, and you hear stuff, you hear people talking about stuff. Not to say you're sort of snooping on conversations, but but you just miss all that when you're when you're remote and out of sight is out of mind for people who don't necessarily think legal or anything other than something to tick a box about to get to the end result. So I, I think that's, I think that's the main thing I'd call out in terms of flexibility, but, but, you know, primarily it's, it's, it's a, it's a huge positive, I think for, for people lucky enough to be able to work at home because often, you know, a lot of, lots of people can't do that. So I think we're, we're very lucky as a profession to be able to universally do that. And I think it's definitely opened up the ability for a company to explore more candidates who may not necessarily be sitting in London, but could be, elsewhere um, and have an ability yep. to you know attract wider talent when they go out to the market to recruit uh, absolutely i think that's right and i think you, know, you see that see that from our recruitment processes that you, you know you're not quite nearly so rigid about people necessarily living very close to the you know, central london for example and and, and so you, you look at other very quality, quality candidates who you might not necessarily have considered in the past so that's all to the good uh, what advice can you offer a lawyer who is contemplating a career in house that uh, may add some value at the highest level? Yeah, so I mean, we've 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 covered a few of the bits. I mean, I, I think um, you know, if, if someone's con contemplating an in house career, it, it's about being honest with what 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 you find interesting. And I think I think this applies to any job, frankly, whether it's in house or private practice or, or any career it is, you know. Different people, different people find different things interesting, and you can't, you know, other people can't determine that for you. So you really, it's it's within your gift and important that you're, you, you know, if you're honest about what you like in a role, then you can obviously you can be more, much more focused in going out and getting that. And I think yeah. um, you know, in house does really offer a really, really very fulfilling career these days. It's not just a, you know, maybe in the in the distant past it was it was kind of like you'd sit there and just outsource stuff to external lawyers when it got complicated or frankly interesting. Whereas I think now there's a different mindset and you, you still obviously have a good relationship with external lawyers, but you also keep a lot of the interesting stuff yourself. And 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 so know, knowing what you like and, and, and how you sort of want to spend your days, because there is a degree of flexibility, how you build that in. And so I think that's, that's important. Um, but, but also sort of, um, you know, prioritizing work, I think, 
um you know all private practice work is important because you're paying for it by the hour effectively um and i think in-house people will 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 waste your time (laughs) in the nicest possible way um so i think um being being really clear about where you add value is also is also kind of important great is there anything else that you wanted to add aside of what i've asked you today anything in particular uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I hope that's relatively useful. Some of it's some of it's sort of pretty obvious, but um, you know, yeah. it's uh, it's um, it's it's always good to 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 talk these through these things through and have the opportunity to to talk talk a little bit about about how it all, all works and how I've experienced it. So thanks for the opportunity. Well, it's been great having you, Will. Thanks very much. It's um, been a joy collaborating with you, and I appreciate all the time and effort that you've put into this. Um, so You're before welcome. we close up, if anybody has any questions for Will or myself, please get in contact with me via my email at donna.rosenberg at jamesonlegal.com. Um, for those who don't know Jameson Legal, we are an international legal and compliance recruitment company. We have offices in London, Abu Dhabi, Hong Kong, and Singapore, and we recruit for law firms, professional services industry and commerce for positions such as legal company secretary risk and compliance thanks again will um, i look forward to staying in touch and in the meantime stay safe thank you thanks very much all the best